Six key considerations when representing a buyer or seller in a multifamily property. Hi, my friends, Clint Stitzer with The Purposeful Practitioner and Stitzer Properties here. And in today's video, I want to talk about multifamily properties. As residential realtors, it is inevitable that at some point in time, we have an investor, a client, a family friend that either wants to list or purchase a property that's two or more units. Sometimes it's as many as 20 and sometimes it's three. Um, in today's video, my goal is to give you some key considerations as you navigate this process. For some of you, this may be something you do all the time, so there's not much new to learn here. For others, this may be an introduction into the questions to ask. So when I, by starting this, what I want the idea that I want to present is that multifamily is a very, very complicated animal. I'm not saying it's something you can't do. All I'm saying is there is a lot of layers to the onion. And for you to do well at it and to do a great job representing your client, it doesn't mean that you have to be an expert in every single layer. It just has to mean that you know what questions to ask, right? Because ignorance is not that you don't know the answer. Ignorance is that you don't even know the question. So my goal today is to help incite and trigger your mind to begin to processing on what questions might you need to ask should you look at a multifamily property. All right. So the very first thing I like to start with is this idea of your mindset when you're dealing in multifamily, okay? As residential realtors, we're so used to a single family property that we value based on comparable sales, and that's fantastic. However, when we get into the multifamily game, we're really buying a business. So when you look at the purchase or the sale or the valuation of this property, you need to put the lens on that you are buying or selling a business, or you're facilitating the purchase or the sale of a business. And the way that we value that business is we value it based on cash flow. Okay, so the very first thing of the six key factors is factor number one is your mindset, and the mindset is that you're facilitating the sale of a business. Okay, so now that we've adapted this mindset that this isn't a, a, a home that we compare to another home, and whether it's got the same, you know, countertops and backyards, sure, all those things matter in evaluating the asset, but at the end of the day, it's a business. So the the idea number two that you're gonna get into, key factor number two is revenue, right? And when you start thinking about the revenue of the property, of the business, you wanna start understanding all the facets about that revenue. So, okay, well, tell me about the leases. How long ago did they get signed? Are the leases currently at market? Tell me about the tenants who have signed those leases. Let's talk about the customers of the business. Are the customers qualified to stay there? Um, do they follow the rules of the business? Are they good customers? Do they have a lot longer time on their contract? And is the, the terms of their contract such that they're able to buy the service, lease the building for below market? Are they above market? Are they at market, right? So you can start asking questions about stability. You can start asking questions about um, whether where they're at is current with the market. You can start asking questions about whether they, they're behind. Maybe they're current right now, but six months ago, they were six months behind and they owe the property six months worth of back rent, okay? Um, then you can start asking questions of, do the tenants, the customers, have the same understanding of the contract as a landlord? Meaning, does the current seller of the property, is their document set of leases the same document set that the tenants are following and believe? You would, you'd be surprised how often it is that the landlord says, hey, here's the deal, uh, and the tenants say, no, that's not the deal, because I got this addendum and email over here that this is, this is actually the deal, okay? So you're buying a business, you really want to understand the current revenue of that business, the contracts associated with that revenue, the people behind those contracts, and then how long you're committed to that revenue, whether you can change it, whether it's at risk, everything about that revenue you want to do. The great news is that all the forms in the RSAR library or in most realtor libraries give you the mechanisms to be able to follow to unpack these. You just got to make sure you include them in your listing and sale. Okay. The next thing that we want to talk about is expenses. This is the third key consideration. Consideration number one is that you're buying and selling a business. Consideration number two is tearing apart the revenue. Consideration number three is understanding the expenses. Are they fully captured? Right? Are all the expenses, all the parts and pieces, the insurance, the maintenance contracts, are there any you know payables that are due every six months, like a like a bond or a municipality bond? Is there anything associated with the property that the owner forgot to throw in the income statement because they they only pay it they pay it irregularly and maybe they pay it out of another account? 
Um, are the expenses due to go up? Are the expenses due to go down? You know, really diving into what the expenses are and where the opportunity to optimize those expenses is something that you need to spend time on. So do you need to be an expert on every line item and know what it's gonna be to be able to be a value add to the purchase and sale of multifamily? Absolutely not. You just need to be able to ask the questions, what are the expenses to operate and own this property? What are they currently and what do they look like in the future? And is there an opportunity to optimize them? Real quick, same question needs to be asked for revenue. Is there an opportunity to optimize the revenue? Is there missed opportunity? Can we add laundry services? Can we, you know, can we add a, a special Amazon box that we charge a little bit more for so people don't have their stuff sitting on the porch? There are tons of opportunities to optimize a business when you look at it as a business. All right, so now key consideration number four is now we get into the asset, right? What, what is the, the building itself? How is its condition? Is, is there a bunch of uh, um, deferred maintenance? So are there gonna be big capital expenditures in the future that you've gotta repair? Is everything on par with the city? Is everything up to snuff? Uh, is the building or the business registered to operate? In most municipalities, you gotta have a business license to operate a multifamily property. So is the asset itself, is it in compliance? Is it in good condition? Are there any deferred capital maintenance items that are require additional extra money to be spent? Um, you know, it's basic stuff. This is gets back to like buying a single family property. Hey, let's do the inspections, right? And the title work. I mean, is it being used as a multifamily in the way it's being used? Is it legal? Is it compliant? Okay, so we're gonna get everything into the building and its compliance and its maybe future expenses and liabilities. Okay, which leads right into the next consideration and that is liabilities. What associated with that building might present a liability or a threat to the future cash flow or revenue or expenses of that building? So I already mentioned deferred maintenance. I also mentioned uh, municipality compliance. So is there more units than currently permitted for? Is there an extra unit that was added after the fact? Is there a business license? Are the tenants like have all these issues that uh, they're just waiting to get a new landlord and hope that the new landlord fixes it that the last one did not, okay? So you really wanna dive into and start asking the questions, I'm taking over a business, that means you're taking over the business's existing and future liabilities. So what exists underneath the rug that maybe isn't being disclosed or maybe isn't even known? Okay, so you wanna dive into the asset, you wanna dive into the liabilities. That's number five is liabilities. And finally, number six, the key consideration is management. When you take into the mindset that you're buying a business, you gotta take into consideration the fact that it takes effort, expertise, diligence, and regular on top of this to serve the customers, manage the asset, manage the liabilities, and make sure the expenses stay under control. So what is the plan and approach to manage this business? Obviously, property management services are abundant, but not every property manager is a fit for the specific property, its location, its tenant profile, all those different things. And not every person really has the best personality and skill set to manage a property. They may have the capacity to purchase one, they may be smart enough to understand it conceptually, but perhaps their personality, their schedule, their other commitments in life make them a poor fit to personally manage it. So the sixth key consideration, especially if representing a buyer is, hey, what's our plan to manage this business? What's your plan to manage this business? And how can I make sure that you've got the plan and the team to ensure this business, multifamily asset, is successful? This is Clint Stitzer with Stitzer Properties and the Purposeful Practitioner sharing six key considerations when facilitating the purchase or sale of a multifamily asset. If you have any questions, you wanna dive deeper, feel free to give me a call. Thanks for watching. I wish you great success in your real estate practice.